My name is Faisal Hussein. I'm a Muslim from Kenya. Uh, my name is Jamal Jama Ali. I'm a Muslim. My name is uh, Fahmi Adam. Um, I'm a Muslim. And my name is Hafsa Hussein. And uh, I'm a Muslim. Ali. Um, I'm a Muslim. Um, my name is Sumaya Mutal. And I'm a Muslim. I'm a Somali Muslim. Islamophobia is currently something that has been affecting most Muslims. There have been so many discrimination that I have faced from either my friends or many people within my religion, and it has been stereotyped as uh, promoting terrorism. The idea of portraying the 1.6 billion Muslims across the world as terrorists is, is a bad idea. The 9-11 attack was a turning point for many. The most powerful nation on earth, the United States of America, had afterwards announced the most controversial war against terrorism. With many people not being able to differentiate between extremism and terrorism, I think Islam hates us. There's something, there's something there that there's a tremendous hatred there. There's a tremendous hatred. We have to get to the bottom of it. There is an unbelievable hatred of us. Very, very few elements, as it happens in most societies, there are elements of some people who are different from the others. The same applies to terrorists. Now, because of what the terrorists do, and all their extremist actions. Other people, whenever they hear Islam or Muslim or anything Islam related, they just think, they just think about like bombing, war, killing, violence. If we look at every religion, I think every religion has an uh, extremist people, but my religion does not advocate for extremism. In fact, in the Quran, and uh, strictly, strictly forbids terrorism. This Islamic extremist has been defined by the um, British government that this it's a form that opposes democracy or liberal things. She was in, I believe when uh, extremism has been, when, when you say we take matters as, as extremist, as an extremist, as an extreme act, yeah? Let's go back, uh, I think, in 2017, 2016, 2017. It was around during Ramadan. Yeah, it was Ramadan in, Mac in Medina, a holy city to the Muslims. Somebody went to attack. He committed suicide. And I believe that person, it was mainly treated as an ISIS act. Now, do we define that do we define that person as a Muslim or do we define that person as an extremist? Personally, I define that, I, I can label that person as an extremist. Why? Because first of all, you're at a holy land. Second, you're, you're doing that act in a holy month. Third, you, I believe all those actions are extremist acts. So if you say, as for me personally, if you say Trump, um, when he lab as in when you label a Muslim, okay, the whole world, Somali, Shabab, Marabu, Yemen, Nihutis, you know those stuff any in an, you don't label a person, a Muslim, as an a terrorist. It hurts, you, know? you never know how what a person holds in his heart, how he is. The war on terror took a sudden and costly turn. Anti-Muslim prejudice has grown so considerably and so rapidly in recent years. Terrorists have brought a lot of harm, more harm to Muslims than other, other non-Muslims. For example, as from my own experience, I'm from Northern Kenya, a town called Mandera. Going to Mandera from Nairobi, it takes a lot. 
it means a lot to us. It's a hectic one. Officers frisk you, sometimes beat you, and sometimes get some some silly excuses just to to handcuff you or just to to just to arrest you. Like you have a long beard like Osama bin Laden, you have a kanzu, and you wonder how does that apply to to you being a terrorist? That's an Islamic culture. Wearing the garment, the the scarf, and having a long beard. So sometimes it forces you not to do not to avoid all those. You have to shave your beard, act like you are not a Muslim. And it's such distressing. So there was this one time I was heading to town from where I stay. Then I, I got into this matatu. The only seat that was left back and was next to this lady. So me, automatically, I just went to sit next to her. And then immediately I sat down. I just asked to be excused. She passed and then I kind of called me another conductor. Then when she reached there, Akanda Kuzusha asking for her money, saying that I to cook in the in the same matatu as an Al Shabab. And now the conductor continued, Kamuliza Al Shabab Ngani. Then she threw him straight at me, like Ule Wala Lo Pale. No, the funny part is I'm not even a Somali. But it's okay. So Akanda Kuzusha arguing with the conductor, really shoot the sake, you know what what. And then other passengers got riled up also. Some on her side, some on my side. And it was a really awkward situation to be in. So I just stood up and calmly left the matatu and waited for the next one. It was a really, really intense experience. I think people take, take, take Muslims to be terrorists because most of the people, most of the people who, who have been associated with this thing come from Somalia. You, you, you'll be able, you, you can confirm with me that when you see a Muslim, you f there's a feeling you start feeling huh? like when you meet many Somalis, a group like when you're going to 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 Isli, you'd be feeling insecure that this place has been, has been bombed severely. This place it has been associated with keeping goons or terrorists. There has been a point that and you know, this thing has gone to to, to 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 a point that people have even gone have even banned Mira, claiming that. Because Muslims uh, consume a lot of mira in the UK, in those areas, they see that this money which is being used, this money which is being um, got from the sale of mira is being used to fund terror terrorism. Uh, see, we are going to escape. I know to do what? I thought I don't remember. Then now, you guys and some other friends, you got in first. You were faced, yes. Everyone was being faced. But then yours, compared to how I was faced, wasn't even cool. Like, I was even asked to remove my, uh, the pin I have holding my scarf. Because it kept buzzing, because the guy was using a handheld, uh, I know what they're called, metal specter, I guess. Even after passing to the large one, he still asked to fix me again, which was really weird. Yeah. driving uh, as in I was driving a car that day I was going to pick my dad so apparently my car to look to me I was with my cousins so um, you know with um, yani we carried our IDs and every and all and all so my cousin was the driver to come to Naendesha Vizuri now what happened was Took out to Mefika, I think, a security check. We had our IDs, took a handout. Now, the thing was, I have a, I have a younger bro of mine, yeah? So th that brother, Nikon, uh, he's, I've gone at an 18. 
So he had uh, like, um, I think the uh, provisional, that's what you get. So I call Mr. Hau, Mr. Hau home, and he forgot to carry the copy. I carry a copy and the and I say, "Ma, you need." We That was the first thing we asked. So apparently, we have a family house in uh, Old Town. Our family house. That's where we go to for family gatherings, meetings. So to Mombia to metro Old Town to end our home. Now home it was a past bridge. You know, I live in Mombasa. To Kifika, so we are scared to metoka Old Town. The first thing I got to be, we are not back because we are not Kibokoni. So how can you, ja because my brother was, is a duck, is, he's darker than I, but she's an Akonakali hair. We all look similar Somalis. We, we are similar to Somalis. So we, we asked him, on what grounds are you? Kwanu ni mwemzulia? Akatombia ni mwemzulia because we have an ID na pia mnasema kwa metoka kibokoni, around kibokoni area. So how does, how can you judge a person? Yani, I hope you get my point, yeah? So it was after that incident, actually, we had to, to remove our scary, to achieve, actually, since I'm the elder brother, I'm the elder brother, Namjua, Ninajua Naitwa Nani. You can even look into his color, whatever you want. If you want to ask me any question about him, just ask me, I'll answer you truthfully. And uh, when he saw how persistent we persistent we were and how because he's my younger bro, I he had to tell us you guys have to go to their national idea. He had to tell him we are we we had applied for. He had applied for because I had mine by then. He had applied for it, so there's no need for the confusion. That's what hurt most about the extremes because you can't seem one name to Kwauso, Kasema Uyu, Somali, Uyu, Marabu, Uyu, Nani. Never judge a person. This last decade has seen a warring rise in violent conflicts mostly happening in Muslim nations, Afghanistan. Their nights spent huddled inside, soothing their young children as bombs fall all around them. Palestine. A massive number of homes were affected as children lost their homes and families. Pakistan. Spilling onto the streets of Duma over the weekend. Sudan. Somalia, the late general was the self Syria, an alleged second regime airstrike ripped through a medical clinic where activists were documenting the aftermath. And Yemen. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاهُ جَحَنَّةً Whoever kills a soul that, that he has not created, that he has no right to kill, goes straight to hell the year after. It means that that soul is not a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim. It means a human soul. If you kill a human soul, a human being, you will have a heavy price to pay. There is an ayah in the Quran which talks about the killing of human beings. It says if you kill one person, it's like if you have killed the whole humanity. And if you save one life, it's as, you, it's as if you have saved the whole of humanity. In fact, in the Quran, and uh, strictly, strictly forbids terrorism. I can even quote an ayah. The ayah says, the ayah says, "Wala taqtulun nafsa allati haram Allahu bil haq dalikum wasakum bihi laallakum taqilun." So this ayah tries to say that you cannot kill a soul which God created. And it's against, and it's against a religion to kill people unless it's a penalty which was put forward by the state or by the law. So unless it's not that, no, not any person is allowed to kill innocent people. So Islam, the religion with the second largest followers in the world, is believed by many to be the cause of all conflict in the world. Allahu Akbar. Muhammad Rasulullah, Ya Habib Allah.
إبراهيم خالل الله اسمع الغاب هو على معلي خلق الله فنفن ما أحليه فاستبت على الجود ما كان يقوله لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر Islam is a peaceful religion Islam means purity, submission and justice and uh, when we look at the word Islam itself, it's, an, it's a religion which advocates for peace and justice and submission to Lord. And uh, to me, Islam is all about peace and love, as it's been stated in the Holy Quran. Islam from the get-go means peace. So my religion does not advocate terrorism, and people should stop stereotyping Islam as a terrorist religion. In reality, Islam is just about peace and love. They have misread, they were misled, and they have misinterpreted the teachings of Islam. Terrorists have misinterpreted it. And I think they need to be, they need to be portrayed as people who, have, who are sick in their mind and not as Muslims. Yeah.